missed last week is you probably remember we did a mulled wine. This week we've got another classic hot beverage um, consumed around Christmas and in the, in the winter when it's cold outside. So um, we're going to be doing a hot spiced cider. And again, a recipe that I've been kind of playing around with for a, for a few years now. It was very, very popular back in London when I used to run it in the winter. We're going to take a, a, a nice, good, cloudy apple juice. You don't want to be using the clear stuff. You want to be getting as much of that good apple flavor in there. Make sure you get the good stuff. So I'm just going to use my glass as a measure. So we're going to go one cloudy apple juice. And then as is customary, we're going to do a couple of little home pours, little cheeky home pours. And we're going to be doing, uh, the, the one I like really is rum and, uh, and gin, both together. So we'll just pour those in, probably around a triple, uh, so 90 mLs for my UK viewers. Um, so we've got rum, obviously it's going to kind of give it a nice depth and a weight, a kind of classic uh, spice cider. Uh, alcohol component and then I like to use gin obviously being British we love the gin but it's also it's the botanicals that it brings you've obviously got the spices you've got your honey you've got your sweeteners you've got your lemon you've got your apple juice but adding all of these lovely little interesting intricate um, botanicals really is going to make it a, you know set it apart from a kind of lesser um, spice cider so there we go and we're going to throw in a couple of slices that I've already done of fresh lemon also some fresh orange we're just going to grate some nutmeg straight in there. All right, don't be shy. It's just wonderful. The smell of nutmeg is unmistakable for anything else. We've also got some cinnamon stick as well. Obviously, you could, if it's easier, if you've already got it at home, you could buy ready powdered stuff. It's not going to make that much difference in this application here. Grate that cinnamon in there. Boom. Just a wee bit of cinnamon. Honey is going to be our base sweetener. Where's that spoon? There it is. Probably not going to need too much honey. Just just a, enough to kind of compensate the citrus that's gone in there, the lemon. I'm going to go with just one teaspoon of honey. You can always add more or put less in depending on how sweet your tooth is. And then this is my little secret ingredient really, just to kind of like, again, give it some depth and really like work with those spices and flavors. We're going to put in a little bit of uh, pomegranate molasses, or you can also use other things like date syrup works really well, which I've used in the past, but date syrup is tends to be a little bit expensive and quite hard to find, whereas pomegranate molasses seem to be everywhere these days. So there we go, look at the colour of that. So we're just going to put in probably a half teaspoon should be enough, it's quite a strong flavour. It also has um, a little bit of a, like tartness to it as well. So that goes in there, and then where would we be without the cloves? So we've got some fresh cloves in there, to really like bring this to life. So we're going to throw in, I mean again, depending on how much you like, I'm going to throw in probably 10 because we're going to do this quickly, right? It's not going to have too long to sit there. Again, with, with all of the infusions, the longer you leave stuff, the better. So you could get that all in there, leave it cold, leave it for a few days just to really marry in there. Or you just add more of the things that you want to taste and then get it on the heat and heat it through. As I've said before, gentle, gentle, gentle heat. The slower you warm this up, the better it's going to be, the release of flavours is going to be what you want. Smells amazing as well, if you guys were here you would know this kitchen is just smells so beautiful of rum, gin, spices, you know, it really does feel festive in here. The cider is now down to about, oh lovely, about, down to about uh, drinking temperature now, so we're ready to put it into our glass. And uh, we th feel free to throw all the bits in as well. You know, it kind of makes the glass look a bit better, a bit more festive, and I feel like at this time of year, people don't really mind picking uh, <laughs> picking cloves out of their teeth. It wouldn't be Christmas without a few cloves in the tooth, would it? For a garnish, there's a number of things you could do. We could, we could go with the old um, cinnamon stick again. We could go with the um, star anise. Both of those things look good. Or there's another little one you could do if you want to get fancy. I guess you just take an apple like this. It's an apple cider. Just gonna slice the end off like that, make some little slices. Now we'll take our little cocktail stick and we'll just pop that through the middle. Try not to stab yourself in the hand. And uh, and then we just give it a little twist like that. Super, super easy. You can get even more fancy than this actually. If you're really good with the knife skill, you can actually cut those even finer. And you've got yourself something like that that looks really, really cool. And there we go, Bob's your uncle. You've got yourself 
our beautiful little hot spice cider to warm you up and all your friends at Christmas time. So there we go. Cheers, hot spice cider. You've seen it here on Drinks Undressed. You can always do a non-alcoholic one for the kids as well, exactly the same. Just uh, don't put any hooch in it and you'll be all right. Here we go. There you go, the famous clove in the tooth. Cool, you like that Dave? Yeah.